The National Basketball Association has become one of the most iconic leagues in all of America, but believe it or not, it hasn't always been that way. From superstar players to game-winning shots to dynasties and heartbreak, here is a history of the NBA. And to do so, we have to head back to a gymnasium in Springfield, Massachusetts, 1892. It is January, the weather is freezing, so James Naismith, a coach, decided to invent a sport that could be played indoors. He called it two words, basketball. Played in a court, there would be two sides, both holding a 10-foot peach basket in which each team had a score on their own for goals. The game consisted of 13 rules, as follows. 1. A soccer ball was to be thrown in any direction with only the hands, as well as batted. Rule 3. No dribbling is allowed, meaning a player cannot run with the ball in hand. 4 through 7. No shouldering, pushing, tripping, or striking in any way, or else the umpire will call a foul. The second foul will disqualify a player until the next basket. Rule 8. The peach basket would be connected to a pole, and in order to score, one must shoot the ball into the hoop. 9. If the ball goes out of bounds, it will have to be thrown back into the court by the opposing team within a 5 second period. 10 and 11. The referee carries the job of keeping track of time and goals. 12. The game has two 15 minute halves and a 5 minute break. And finally, Rule 13, the side with the most goals in the end is declared winner, where each goal counts for one point and a tie must continue the game until the next basket. The game was complicated, but started being played by Naismith's class. 18 students showed up, which set up a 9v9 game with positions such as forwards, centers, and guards. Soon, the first public game was recorded in a YMCA gymnasium on March 12, 1892. In the instructors versus students matchup, around 200 spectators showed up to view this new unheard of sport. It became an instant hit, which resulted in a college basketball league soon being formed as an intercollegiate sport. However, there came many flaws with the original game. First, the choice of peach baskets was not a great idea, as when a goal was scored, one had to climb up a ladder to achieve the ball. So they replaced that with iron rims and a net for a free-falling ball after a basket. In 1894, soccer balls were switched to leather basketballs with laces, which would soon be taken over by Spalding. Also, free throws were added that would be shot after a foul at the free throw line. They were worth one goal. Subsequently, field goals would be converted to two. And finally, in 1895, wire mesh backboards were introduced to prevent spectators from interfering with play. That introduced a shot known as a layup. Hey Mr. Naismith, so dribbling has become a really popular thing around here and your original rules don't count against it. Can you permanently add dribbling? Definitely, he replied. So dribbling was adopted in 1901. Wait, uh, Mr. Naismith, there's about 50 players playing right now. Can you change a player limit? Sure, he said. In 1900, five players became the standard amount, and substitutes were allowed to come in from the bench. Okay. Wait, Mr. Naismith. So there's now spectators interfering with play. Can you keep them out? Fine, put some wire mesh around the court. Hey, hey, Mr. Naismith. Now basketball is being called a cage game. I mean, we can't cage the fans out. Can you fix it? Okay, take it away. Anyway, basketball was a very popular sport in the early 20th century, especially amongst school children, but it wasn't succeeding professionally. There were many attempts for a professional basketball program, but each one disbanded in the end for bad organization. But this all changed in 1946. After some adjustments before 1946, the Basketball Association of America, or BAA for short, was founded on June 6 in New York City by Walter Brown. And who would expect that after all those past failed leagues, 
This one would later become one of the most popular sports in America. Eleven teams were founded, ranging mostly from the Midwest and Northeast. Some included the New York Knicks and Boston Celtics, who would continue as the oldest in the NBA. The BAA was in a rivalry with the National Basketball League, which was founded all the way back in 1937. After both leagues fought and fought for popularity, the four best NBL teams gave in and were expanded into the BAA. The remaining NBL teams soon merged with the BAA, and in August of 1949, the league was changed into what we know today, the National Basketball Association. The league formed a new playoff format where each team had to make it past two rounds of the postseason to reach the NBA Finals. Also, the color barrier was broken, statistics began being recorded in points and assists, and the NBA Draft was introduced to receive the best players from college. And speaking of great players, let's talk about George Mikan. Standing at 6'10", Mikan was a giant amongst dwarfs on the Minneapolis Lakers. Averaging over 26 points per game, he absolutely dominated the 50s. But let's not get too excited as the NBA is suffering from racial issues and unexciting play. Since there was no shot clock, each possession took forever. For instance, in a playoff game, the Fort Wayne Pistons beat the Lakers 19-18. Fans were turning away, and the 117 league had dropped down to 10. The teams that were playing were struggling financially. Soon, the Indianapolis Olympians and Baltimore Bullets folded, and the NBA was down to 8. In 1951, the first ever NBA All-Star Game debuted, and in 1954, a shot clock was finally introduced, which revolutionized the game by reducing stalling. Also, by this time in the sport, professional basketball players are extremely tall. The average height in the late 50s of a basketball player was 6 foot 10. You probably don't want to mess with these guys. In 1958, the NBA witnessed its second real superstar in the late 50s, Bob Pettit. Pettit would win a championship on the St. Louis Hawks against the Celtics. And speaking of the Celtics, from the late 1950s to 60s, they would perform the greatest dynasty in all of basketball with five-time MVP Bill Russell, who is known as the best defender ever, John Havlicek, and Bob Cousy. In total, Boston made 10 consecutive finals, only losing one. Okay, we are one of the biggest cities in the US, yet we don't have an NBA team. Let's find one and name it the Chicago Packers. No, 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 the Packers are Chicago's rival in football. Change it. Fine, we'll change it next year. How about the Zephyrs? What the heck? Chicago left for Baltimore a year later. Then, another superstar by the name of Wilt Chamberlain appeared for the Philadelphia Warriors during the early 60s. Chamberlain was an absolute menace because of his height advantage, averaging 30 points a game and holding the one and only 100-point game in NBA history. Whoa, 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 this Chamberlain guy is absolutely abusing the game. As a result, the lane was expanded so the NBA can encourage more perimeter play. Anyway, the NBA had its first nationally televised game in 1962. Then, the Philadelphia Warriors moved out west to San Francisco, and the Syracuse Nationals proceeded to become the 76ers in Philadelphia. The Warriors held legend Rick Barry, who won a title in the 70s with them and shot free throws underhand. Over the next few years, seven more teams were expanded and three teams changed cities. The Rockets would move to Houston after four years and the Bullets would contain two superstar players that would help them win a title. The Cavs, Braves, and Hawks would all struggle for success, while the Sonics, Warriors, and Trailblazers brought home a championship. Finally, the Phoenix Suns and Milwaukee Bucks fought for the number one overall pick, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, in a coin flip in downtown Phoenix. The Bucks won the flip and proceeded to win a finals in 1971 with him. In his career, 7'2 Kareem totaled 6 MVPs and led the entire NBA in points. Kareem capitalized on dunking and invented the famous move known as a skyhook. To add on to the Bucks' success, the Cincinnati Royals unwisely traded Oscar Robertson to Milwaukee. During the early 70s, players pursued for higher contracts due to their money-grubbing mentality. This led to cocaine abuse, scandals, and non-televised games, which brought a bad impression upon the NBA. 
In 1972 and 3, the Knicks and Lakers dueled in two straight finals. Then the rival league ABA merged with the NBA, introducing four new teams in 1976. The Nets received a very warm welcome by their fellow New Yorkers. The Knicks basically said, We're the only New York team. You're scaring our fans. Get out of here after we fine you $5 million. So the Nets went to New Jersey and got fined again. Subsequently, two more bad impressions occurred for the league. Kermit Washington almost killed Ruby Tomjanovich, and the NBA telecast continued struggling with tape delay, which actually occurred in two straight finals featuring the Bullets and Sonics. Wait, what? The owners of the Buffalo Braves and Boston Celtics just swapped franchises? Well, there goes their 13 rings. <laughs> Whoa. That's a large jump. Well, the NBA's overall viewership skyrocketed in the early 80s because of two players and would stay at that number for the next two decades. Not only that, but in 1979, the NBA adopted a three-point shot, along with recording triple-doubles. Hey look, the Lakers have selected number one overall pick, Magic Johnson. At the point guard position, Magic won three MVPs and led the Lakers to five championships over the 80s. He also popularized the no-look passes. The other player who picked six overall was Larry Bird of the Celtics. Bird got famous for his hustle play and consistency. Another factor that popularized the 80s was its extreme violence. The Detroit Pistons built up a team of physical bad boys, including Isaiah Thomas, Dennis Rodman, and the baddest of the bad boys, Bill Lambeer. Nobody wanted to play against this team. They made enemies with everyone, including superstar players such as Larry Bird, Carl Malone, and Michael Jordan. The Pistons were so mean that if you stood in their way, you'd get shoved. With this squad, the Pistons won two consecutive finals. Meanwhile, in the early 80s, NBA fans were forced to watch the Celtics and Lakers feud in more finals. Also, a salary cap was introduced to limit the amount of money a team spends on a player. Oh hey, it's the new commissioner of the NBA, David Stern. A few things you need to sign before you become commissioner. I will never rig NBA games for television ratings. Okay, I will never rig the NBA draft. Ha, huh, like I'd do that. Awesome, you're now the commissioner. Also, Trailblazer fans are still crying after the 1984 draft. First, the Blazers lost the coin flip for the number one overall pick, Hakeem Olajuwon. Then, they got the chance to choose between Michael Jordan and Sam Bowie, and they picked Sam Bowie. Sam Bowie ended up being the biggest draft bust in all of NBA history. Now we have the Pistons and Lakers brawling in a legendary series to reach the finals. In Game 5, with little hope left in Boston, Larry Bird stole the ball and assisted the score, taking the one-point victory. Two more expansion teams in 88, the Miami Heat and Charlotte Hornets. Both teams stunk, but the Heat stunk exceptionally more. Hey, some more expansion teams, the Orlando Magic and Minnesota Timberwolves. Even though these teams are bad, they helped increase NBA marketing. Wait a second, why are there so many players with broken ankles? Nah, it's only Tim Hardaway who popularized the killer crossover over the 90s. This guy would later take advantage of it and even use it on the go. Two years later, the US Olympics basketball team decided that they were tired of having amateur college players on their team. So in 1992, they settled for the Dream Team, who basically dominated every single team they played. On the roster was a man named Charles Barkley, who has become one of the best players at the forward position to not win a championship, losing the finals to the Bulls in six while playing on the Suns. Also, Shaquille O'Neal just broke the backboard, more on him later. Then, the Rockets won the 1994 finals after edging past the Knicks in game seven. They came back the following year as a sixth seed, but Hakeem Olajuwon and the Rockets shocked the world and won the finals against the Magic. Meanwhile, while the Sonics are choking as a one seed and Jason Kidd is blowing kisses, John Stockton and Carl Malone the Mailman dominated the NBA in pick and rolls on the Jazz. However, they came up short in two NBA finals against the Bulls. And speaking of the Bulls, what's better than the NBA having another super team? 
The Chicago Bulls drafted Michael Jordan in 1984, and after realizing his incredible talent, the Bulls, with coach Phil Jackson, built a super team with Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman around him. At the shooting guard position, Jordan absolutely dominated the 90s with six championship victories, five MVPs, and his acrobatic tongue-out dunks. Michael Jordan boosted the NBA's popularity and proved himself to be the best NBA player of all time. Two expansion teams in 95, both of them passing the US borders to Canada. The Vancouver Grizzlies never made the playoffs and moved to Memphis in 2001. Space Jam! A new league was founded in April of 96, named the WNBA for Women Athletes. Uh-oh. What's, What's happening, happening to Jordan? Jordan? Allen Iverson just crossed him over, and he later got a flu in the finals for ordering pizza. Welp, it was time. Michael Jordan's last three minutes of the Bulls is him winning the championship. Also, this just became the most watched game in NBA history. Now, he can finally retire, for the third time, and pursue his dream of baseball and also come out of retirement to play on the Wizards. Now, the Rockets built a super team in 1998, however, lost in the first round because they were past their prime. In the 98 season, tensions grew between the owners and players. You see, NBA players in smaller markets would be incapable of earning as much money compared to the bigger markets. As a result, a lockdown occurred where the players and owners couldn't come to an agreement. That year, the San Antonio Spurs won the title, which would be the Spurs' first of five championships with Greg Popovich, Tim Duncan, the Big Fundamental, and David Robinson. Meanwhile, Dennis Rodman moved to Dallas, where he requested the number 69. Nice. Ah, the new millennial. And what's better than the NBA losing its popularity and watching the Lakers in three consecutive finals? With incredible players such as Kobe Bryant, Shaq, and previous Bulls coach Phil Jackson, the Lakers would flourish with triumph. However, the Lakers' huge market brought suspicion into their success. In the 2002 Western Conference Finals, the Lakers defeated the Kings after shooting 27 free throws in the fourth quarter alone. That's not fair, said every Kings fan. Let's ask the referees. Hey Tim Donaghy, was Game 6 rigged? No, no, it was coincidental. Welp, the Cavaliers just drafted a guy from high school, if that's even allowed. More on him later. Oh wait, a huge brawl just broke out. However, this fight was not just on the court, but with the fans. This was nicknamed the Malice in the Palace, executed by Ron Artest of the Pacers. Hurricane Katrina sent the Hornets from New Orleans to OKC in 2005. They'd received them back in 2007 and become the Pelicans. Oh look, Dwayne Wade and the Heat powered over the Mavericks in the finals, despite Wade shooting 25 free throws in Game 5 alone. This was definitely not rigged. Right, let's ask the referees. Hey Tim, was the 2006 finals rigged? Yes, Donaghy replied. Wow in jail for rigging games. Look, the Phoenix Suns just lost as a 1C to the Spurs. How'd it happen, you might ask? Smack! Steve Nash just broke his nose. Whack! Robert Horry did a hip check on Nash and sent him flying. Hack! All the Sun starters are suspended for leaving the bench area. Well, maybe next year. Seattle was sad since the Supersonics set sail south to become the Oklahoma City Thunder. After leading the Cavs to a finals appearance, LeBron James decided to head off to the Miami Heat in 2010. Hey, it may have set the city of Cleveland on fire, but look at LeBron now, he's got some rings. Meanwhile, the Chicago Bulls have found no luck winning championships after the Jordan era, Lakers fans are complaining how mediocre they are, and the fairly recent Charlotte Bobcats may have only won seven games. Speaking of losing, Chris Paul, star point guard of the Clippers, is sick of choking in the playoffs. In Game 7 against the defending champ Spurs, he made the game-winning shot and continue to choke a 3-1 lead the next series. Anyway, LeBron James enlightened Cleveland when returning in 2014. From there, he and Kyrie Irving would make four consecutive finals all against the same team, the Golden State Warriors. And this Warriors team is a three-point machine, with insane sharpshooter Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson, the Warriors dominated the Western Division. Overall, the Warriors beat the Cavaliers three of four times in the finals. 
In the year they lost, the Warriors had built an incredible 73-9 record, but choked a 3-1 lead. Now, the Oklahoma City Thunder just lost their star player, Kevin Durant, but they still got Russell Westbrook. What did OKC do, you might ask? Build another super team and get manhandled in the first round. Hey look, it's Kawhi Leonard, who made an awesome game winner in Game 7 and won the finals. He must love playing basketball, right? Wrong. He doesn't feel like playing and gets $40 million anyway. Aw, poop. It's COVID. You know the spiel. No fans, masks, testing positive. Not much is happening, except the Brooklyn Nets built a super team with James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving, and lost because Durant's foot was on the three-point line. Meanwhile, famous bulldozer Giannis Antetetete won the finals, Anthony Davis is getting injured by stepping off his bed, and Ben Simmons' mental issues are too extreme that he can't play while making $30 million a year. Now this year has marked the 75th anniversary of the NBA. From dropping down to as many as eight teams, incredible events, players, and eras have brought the National Basketball League up to the 30 teams we know today. And that was the history of the NBA.